My name is Kevin Namaki, CEO of the Gurulosity Brand Management Institute. I'm a brand management trainer and consultant to leading consumer goods companies such as Kimberly Clark, Procter & Gamble, Kraft Heinz, Gorilla Brands, and Nestle. Today we're gonna to learn how to turn your landscape analysis into a story. So you finished your landscape assessment or your landscape analysis, but you're not quite done yet. It's good that we learned how to do key takeaways, how to carve your landscape analysis into something very relevant and meaningful to your audience. But there's a polishing, uh, finishing step that we need to do to really make it feel story-like and to tell the story that you want. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do here is suggest that we back up to the beginning for just a second. Um, before you write the landscape, or before you take a stab at kind of the core draft or the final draft of the landscape, I want you to do a strategic exercise. And I've given you a template here on the board in purple in how to do that. It's a little bit like an exercise you might do if you are creating a creative brief for advertising. You're going to consider your audience, the action that you want the audience to take, and the belief that needs to be created or the mindset that needs to be created in order to do that. And so that's why I've recommended the template that I have here. I want you to look first at desired action, which is all the way over here at the very end, because I want us to start with the end in mind. Think about the desired action you want someone to take as a result of having seen or read your landscape analysis or the presentation that you're gonna give. What is it that you want them to do next once they leave that room or once they've read it? You're gonna write that into the box. So we're actually gonna write the, end, the ending box first. Write in here, write in the desired action that you want the audience to take. Now you have to think a little bit. If the audience is gonna take that action, now what's the one thing I need them to think, believe, or know once they leave the room? And that's what you're gonna put here as your single takeaway. This needs to be simple, and it only needs to be one of these. You don't want multiple single takeaways. So when someone walks out of the room, what's the one thing they have to be thinking in their mind or believe in order to take this desired action? So now you've written your desired action and you've written your single takeaway for your landscape analysis. Now we have to look at the current state. What is the state of the target audience now or the stakeholders that are gonna be in the room or the people that you want to take this action? What is it that they're doing now instead of your desired action? You'll place that here. And then corresponding or going with that, what do they think or believe now or what's their current mindset? What is it that results in them doing the action they're doing now or maybe possibly having inaction versus doing what you would like them to do? So that's the order you're gonna fill these boxes in and you're gonna think through that. That's the strategy behind the story that you're gonna tell. Now, once you have where you want to take them and what their starting point is, you have to fill in the in-between. And this is what your landscape analysis does. When you have a series of headlines or an outline or a draft or a flow that you're creating, you're creating a story that needs to move the audience from the left side to the right side. And you're gonna do it using your headlines and your key takeaways or your key conclusions throughout the landscape analysis. So what you're gonna write in between are basically your most important key conclusions. There might be a handful of these. So even if your landscape analysis might eventually be longer, it could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 slides, whatever length you need it to be, you're still gonna have just a handful of the most important conclusions. If you want someone to leave with this single takeaway, you may need them to believe a few things first in order for them to have that takeaway. So now you've laid out the high level strategy for your landscape analysis. You have their starting point, you have where you wanna take them, and you have some of the most important things you need them to believe at the end of the presentation. So now that you have your landscape analysis strategy, you, you can move to the next step, which is actually headline writing and creating your flow. Now you can use this process to edit and massage a flow or a draft you've started with, or you could create something like this at the very beginning before you draft or write any headlines or any outline. Either is fine, but I think at some point it's helpful to do it regardless. So once you have the strategy, what you next wanna do is write the actual headlines. What most people do is they start creating slides of information and then they come back later and they may or may not even write headlines. Sometimes the headlines will just be descriptive of what's on the slide. 
And that's sort of a backwards way to do it. If you really want to tell a story and you have this strategy in mind, the next thing you want to do is just write your headlines without content. There's a few ways to do this. You can open up a document in Word or in Pages or whatever software you use, and you can just write headlines in a row like an outline. All right, that's one way to do it. You could actually get out blank sheets of paper in a little stack and write a headline on each one and organize them how you want. That's a more physical way to do it. Or you can go straight into outline mode into one of your favorite you know, uh, presentation softwares and write them that way. But the point is, write the headlines first because the headlines will drive your conclusions and story and make sure you include only the information that then goes with that story. And it helps you edit everything else out and bring the most important things to the service. So always headlines first when you're writing the presentation. Once you have the strategy, you have the headline flow, the last thing to do is simply fill in information on the slides. But I think the most important thing to note here when you're adding support for your slides is to keep things very simple and only include a point or two, just enough so that the audience believes the headline or that you've supported the headline. Once you've made a clear case or you supported the headline, you should stop there and not add additional information. You wanna keep things simple, keep things memorable. And once you have someone nodding in agreement to what you're saying, you can move to the next slide. So I have an example here of a, you know, a chart heavy, data heavy slide that has tons of information on it. This is gonna be far less effective for you than an approach that really simplifies, pulls a key stat, for example, off of that page and makes it more prominent. So now you've only got one or two of the most important points you need to support your headlines. So there you have it. Work the strategy, write your headline flow first, and then just minimal support needed to support those headlines. And chances are you're very close to a well-crafted story and a document that tells the story that you want, as opposed to being just a collection of information. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like more information about brand management training and development programs that we offer, check out the links in the description below.